Okay, today I'm looking at uh, low frequency AC electrolysis and I'm using uh, laser saver dual ringer type circuits. Uh, this one's more like a dual thief because the uh, high voltage goes to the positive rail instead of the negative rail like laser saver showed. But I will show where uh, it goes into the negative rail later in the video. So it's what I've got is a microwave oven transformer. And you have to use one of those to uh, get this to work. I've got a small capacitor, just a ceramic one, and that's sitting in there, a glass of salty water. I'm using a AA battery, and I've got a 22K resistor here. And this is just an LED here. So that's basically uh, the circuit. And uh, I'll show you uh, the experiment now. Okay, here's my setup on the bench. Now we're using this microwave oven transformer and you've got to uh, exhibit caution with these because you can get a really, really nasty jolt and I've had quite a few and I'm only using a double A. And so just take care when you're using these things because they are really, really dangerous. So uh, we've got the power source double A and uh, we've got our amp meter. It's measured across a one ohm resistor and it's drawing 1.7 milliamps. That's our 22K resistor. And we're using a 3055 transistor and we've got an LED from base to emitter uh, to protect the base emitter junction. And the HV from this microwave comes from the case, and that's the green wire there. And I've got that running into my uh, AC detector, which is two LEDs back to back. So the red one's anode is on this side, cathode this side, and the opposite for the green. So when the current's flowing this way, the red one lights, and when it's going that way, the green one lights. So that flows into what I'm going to call a load. Now that's a neon ball, but it's not lit at the moment, so we can consider this an open circuit. So measuring across with a true RMS meter, we're getting 35 volts, and the current draw is only 1.7 milliamps. So you can see the power these microwave ovens have. Uh, so what I'll do now is, bear in mind none of these are lit at the moment, I'll just turn the uh, power up a bit to get those well, to get a bulb lit. Now, the red LEDs come on, but the green one hasn't. So we've got current flowing in this direction, but not in this direction. And the neon proves that, because only one side of the neon's lit. So we've got flow coming in this direction, but it's not going back. But we are seeing AC voltage across it. So uh, what I think it, well, what I think is happening is the AC pulse is high enough in this direction to light the neon, but it's not in this direction. So basically, we are, we're getting pulsed DC in effect. So I just wanted to show you that and the fact that only one uh, LED is lit. And then is what I'll do now is I'll swap that over to a capacitor and I'll put that in the water and uh, you can see the difference. Okay, I think the neon bulb test showed that the uh, AC waveform is uh, higher on the positive side than the negative side, or it might be vice versa, I'm not sure. But uh, we don't have that problem with a capacitor. So I've got this uh, electrolytic here, and it doesn't charge uh, because we've got AC now. And we've got both LEDs flashing away there, and you can see the frequency. And also the protection LEDs flashing really really bright that and the current drawer is uh, increased it's uh, all over the place still on the double a battery so that's with this large capacitor here and you can see the frequency i'd say it was about one hertz maybe a bit faster so what i'll do now I'll just switch it over to this slightly smaller ceramic cap And you can see both LEDs are glowing. I hope you can see that. But they're both glowing and they're steady. So we've got AC, but the frequency is much higher. Now, is what I'll do is I'll swap over to this small capacitor here and I'll put that into our water and I'm going to use this one for the electrolysis. Okay, so here's the electrolysis setup. We have a, a pint glass of water and it's salt mixed in there to make it conductive. And uh, there's our cap and it's sitting in the water. I've not got it connected yet. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll just make the connection to the battery. And the electrolysis has started up. Now I hope the camera's picking this up. But there's a lot of electrolysis coming from the right hand electrode. And nothing at all from the left hand.
quite a few uh, bubbles coming there off the electro off the right hand electrode. Now usually uh, hydrogen comes off the cathode uh, in standard electrolysis, and you can see like a milky uh, precipitate coming off the uh, the lead as it breaks down. Now it doesn't take long for this capacitor to be destroyed. The leg basically breaks off, and we had this with the uh, Dr. Stifler's uh, electrolysis with the diodes. Now you can use a diode here as well, but that definitely makes it pulse DC. But this is AC because we have the, the LEDs here, and they're both flashing, and it's at one hertz again. So it is a type of AC and the uh, protection diode's flashing and that precipitate is uh, coming down the, the water now you can see it coming down and plenty of bubbles gushing out of that now is what I'll do now is I have the uh, output connected to the positive in like a dual ring configuration is what I'll do is I'll move it to the negative so it's more like laser sabers and you can see exactly the same behavior flashing LED on the uh, protection diode pulsed AC at exactly the same frequency and the same electrolysis now I'm calling this AC electrolysis even though the frequency is very very low but just let me uh, know what you think I mean I might be miles off but it's uh, fairly interesting anyway and the uh, current draws all over the place but that capacitor will be destroyed I'd say in about 10 minutes okay I hope you found this interesting thanks for watching